how Steve left his job to create a hyper profitable in person business that is turning the health industry on its head. And he's going to share that with you here today. And I'm excited to have you guys here as a, as a guest here. I have Mr. Steve Martinez. He is, he's absolutely amazing. He's going to completely change the game for the health industry. And I want to share with you his story. And I'm going to ask him some questions so that um, we can help you guys all uh, you know, on your path to getting more health and wealth and, and getting what you want out of life. As an entrepreneur, you need to take care of your health. And I want to talk with Steve here because he has completely shifted the way health is basically being uh, done today and he's using some unique strategies that I've never seen I've never heard in uh in the you know last 10 years of being in the health industry and seeing what's going on he's creating something really really unique here so I'm excited to bring this to you guys and I'm excited for you guys to watch and learn and hear from Steve himself um so Steve what's up my man can you hear me what's yeah dude I can hear you loud and clear how you doing today awesome. I'm doing great, man. It's good to have you on. Um, so tell me a little bit more about you, Steve. Talk to me through, uh, take me back, take me back. Before Steve was the hyper profitable business owner that's <laughs> running and gunning and changing lives left and right and is, right. you know, basically running a business that, uh, you know, is really, really profitable considering, considering in the industry that you're in. Um Talk me before that, Steve, when he was sure. in college, talk me through there. How did that come about? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I'm originally from Washington state. So I've been here in the Valley, um, since 2014 and this is actually my second career. So I didn't start off in medicine and, uh, you know, until about maybe about, you know, 12 years ago. So I was actually a firefighter. I was a firefighter for about 10 years. And, um, you know, so I really, you know, I, that, was, that was my dream. That was my goal to, to be a firefighter for the next 30 years. And, you know, that was, that was my, my plan, but, um, things changed. And, and so during my time, um, back home in Washington state, I actually, um, you know, had the chance to really, you know, explore a lot of different options. And one of the options I explored was actually going into the military. So I spent time, you know, four years in the service as well. And during that time in the military is when I actually got my first exposure to medicine. And it wasn't by choice either. Um, it was actually because I had a traumatic injury in the military and I wasn't able to continue with the, uh, the special operations program that I was originally enlisted for. So long story short, short, that kind of brought me full circle to where I am today. And I'm actually the first one in medicine within my family. So I, I don't come from a medical background. I don't, or as far as family wise, um, you know, a lot of, you know, blue collar, hardworking people. And, um, and, and that's where I came from. And so that kind of instilled in me a lot of the core values and foundations that I actually practice today. And one of the reasons why I think that we are, we are able to have a lot of success in my practice because of the core values that were established in me as, as a child and when I was young. So, but, you know, throughout the years, you know, like I said, I wasn't able to do and perform physically like I, like I wanted, like I needed to do if I wanted to continue to be a firefighter. And I think we're all on our, we all have our own health and wellness journey, right? And, and myself included. So during that time, you know, I had to think of a different career because, the injury I sustained, and pretty much I just blew up my back. I ruptured my spine. And, um, you know, through that journey, I had to, you know, participate in a lot of different therapies and routines to help me literally get me back on my feet. And so that kind of brought me to like where I am today. You know, I, I went to uh, PA school up there in, in Seattle, you know, University of Washington. And then after I graduated, I really wanted a challenge. You know, I really wanted to be stressed and broken down in many ways, especially at the beginning of my career. Um, you know, so I can be the best version of myself. That's what I wanted to be. So long story short, I, I found myself in Mercedes, Texas, <laughs> you know, so I just drove down from Washington state, found myself in Mercedes. And I worked at a small clinic, um, called New Western Clinical de Valle. And I was there for about three years. And then, uh, I moved on to uh, a clinic in Donna and then, but since that, it, before I opened my clinic now, but, but, but during that journey, it was one of those things where, I was restless inside because I wasn't able to practice the way I believe. I wasn't able to practice the way I knew people were wanting and expecting when they went to go see a clinician. And so that's more what I was practicing in. The reason why is because I was practicing more in a conventional realm and not a functional realm like I practice now. We, are, we were pretty much treating symptoms 
but never treating the system that was causing the symptoms in the first place. And that always stuck with me and really frustrated me because I looked at each individual that I was serving. And I believe, truly believe that medicine should be an act of service, but I wasn't able to help them in the way I wanted. So that's, that's why I opened, you know, the Restore Wellness, uh, what I'm doing now, and also developing a new program called Lions Lead that I'll be launching here officially soon. But it, it's the same philosophy, Daniel, the same, the same root cause medicine, the same core values I carry with me wherever I go. Um, it is, like you said, it's a different is a different philosophy of medicine. It's not a normal in and out real quick, hear your pills, see you in three months, labs look normal, you're on your way. It's really helping each individual become the best they can be in the way they want and me joining them along their journey to help get them to that destination. And like I said, once I made that change, it's been awesome and I, I'll never go back. So Steve, you said right there, you said, I was treating the, the symptoms, not the system. Talk me through a little bit about yeah. the conventional, how that conventional method of, of, of medicine is right now and what you were seeing that they just kind of, like you said, it was like a restless feeling. You couldn't, you couldn't pass this up. And what is that feeling? Because I think right now, you know, I'm stuck in it most as right now coming to you. I, I mean, obviously you're my, you're my physician is like the person I look to for, for medical yeah. advice, but um, but I was stuck in this conventional, but I didn't know what was going on. All I knew was I would show up to the doctor. They would pop me with some pills or pop me with some medicine. They would see me in 10 seconds and they would just look at me and say, I'm good. Just hit, hit me out. Right. Um, so, so talk me through what you were experiencing as the other side, when you were the one doing that to, you know, essentially not, not doing that specifically, but you were the one practicing on the patients here. And what were you, what were you experiencing that there was that disconnect for you? Yeah, absolutely. So that's the way the system's set up. You know, the system, in, in my opinion, right? A lot of things I'll, you know, I'll mention talk about are my opinion and what I believe. I believe the system is set up that the sicker we are, the more money they make. And they being, you know, the pharmaceutical companies. So I always like giving this analogy to how we look at different things in our life. If, if you, Daniel, if you go outside right now and start your truck and your truck's making a noise, click, 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 when you started your, your vehicle, what do we ask ourselves? Why is my truck making a noise? Why is my car making a noise? What is going on? What's wrong? But we don't take that same approach in medicine. It's almost like me, you know, or you going out to your truck and your truck's making a noise and you say to yourself, okay, why is my truck making a noise? Hmm, I'll, um, I'll just turn up my music. Whoop, now I don't hear the noise anymore. You know, all I hear is music. Does that make sense? Because no, psychologically, you know that something's still wrong. You didn't fix the problem. You just kind of covered things up. And that's kind of what we do in medicine. We don't want to turn up the music. We want to actually figure out what's going, what's going on, you know, with the engine or the vehicle itself. And so a lot of times that that's what was going on. You know, I, I served people that, you know, they had, you know, one, two, three, four, five different blood pressure medications at a time. And I'm like, you know, what are we doing? So the question isn't, you know, how many more pills I can give you? The question is, why does somebody have high blood pressure in the first place? The question isn't how many, you know, what kind of drugs should I give you for your anxiety or depression? The question is, why do they have anxiety and depression in the first place? And that could go on for everything, you know, as far as pain, anxiety, low libido, energy. The question, in my opinion, that we should be asking more in medicine is why? What's causing these situations? What are causing these symptoms? And the answer is probably very in-depth, you know, probably many, many reasons. But the thing about it is a lot of times people don't have a chance to share their story. They're in and out super, super quick. Boom, boom, boom. See you later. Everything's normal. You don't feel normal, but they're telling you everything's normal. Why? Because the lab results are normal. And so you never really thrive in life. You're just surviving. And that really frustrated me because I was living functional. What I practice now, I've been living for the last you know, 25 years. I've been studying this stuff for a long time. But now I finally have that chance to practice the way I believe, to practice the way I think people are wanting. But for a long time, especially here where we're at, they really had nowhere else to go. But now they do. And so that's why I consider it's a huge opportunity, a huge blessing in my life to really serve in the way I believe. And a lot of times, you know, people are just like, wow, I had no idea. So we're getting people off the prescription medications. We're implementing these new routines and, and therapy um, developments that are just backed by science and, and research based. It's just that, the, again, the way the system's set up, we never have an opportunity to share these techniques and to build that relationship to help get you on that path to health and wellness. 
we're really, in my opinion, again, we're, pl- we're practicing sick care and not health care. And that's what I want to, you know, do my best to try to change. How did you find out about this? Like, I mean, it's not, it's not, like most doctors are probably stuck in this thing, in the, in the thing right now, right? But how did you, was there a guide or something? Or how did you figure out about, like, there is a new, there is another opportunity besides what's going on right now. Because most doctors are stuck in the system. But yeah. Um, but you, you found something else, but I'm, I'm curious, how did you get to that mm-hmm. point? How did we get to the point where, where you're, you're, let's say you're in the, you're in the office, right? You're in a practicing office, you're practicing at a practice right now. And how do you get from there to, you know, going to something else? If that's all you knew. Right. It's very difficult. I think, I think you have to really search within yourself. And of course, everyone's on a different journey, even practitioners. I know a lot of practitioners, like you said, they feel stuck. It's like, man, it's like, I want to do this. I want to do this, but I can't. Why? For many reasons. You know, a lot of times it's because they're controlled by insurances. You know, insurance actually dictate what kind of health care and what kind of therapies and routine, even attention and time you get as an individual. And I didn't want to be controlled in any way. So actually, you know, I started just doing research and figuring out, you know, okay, if, is there even opportunities for me to practice the way I believe? And the answer was yes. The answer is yes. And so I, um, you know, I, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books. And one of the books I came across was Hormones, Health, and Happiness by my mentor, Dr. Stephen Hotsey. And he's up in um, Katy, Texas, in a phenomenal functional medicine clinician. He has a beautiful clinic, one of the founding fathers, in my opinion, when it comes to this medical revolution that we're in right now. And he kind of took me under his wing. And he just kind of helped guide me in many philosophies and, and customs and courtesies and protocols and procedures on what he did to build a very, very successful practice. And that's what we do today. So it's, again, it's the mindset. We don't even call the people who visit us patients. We call them guests. Because I actually believe that, you know, this is our home and you're welcome here. Um, you know, like I said, we believe that medicine should be an act of service, not a, just a quick, you know, something we throw at you real quick and hopefully you do it on your by yourself. We believe that medicine should, we should develop relationships and guide you and be with you as um, a team member on your journey. So a lot of different philosophies that we, that we implemented, but it is, it's going against the grain. And I'm not saying mm. it's easy right now. I'm just saying that, that it's, it's, it's very important in my opinion. It's something I have a passion doing, but it takes a lot of work because this medicine isn't a quick fix medicine. You know, we're asking the question again, why we have to investigate and discover and peel back the layers to why we experience and what we're going through as individuals. And like I said, everyone's different. I got 10 people lined up in front of me and they all have, you know, uh, anxiety, for example, or fatigue, but they have it for different reasons, same symptoms, but different systems. And so it really kind of put your detective hat on in many different ways, a lot of fun, but again, it's more in depth. We need more time which is something the way the medical system is set up, in my opinion, doesn't allow us to practice um, in that way. That's why I'm, I'm changing it in, in my practice to make sure we serve in the way I believe uh, people should be served. Did you have like a moment when you're just like, this is it? Like, was there a <laughs> moment? Was there ever a moment where you're a practicing doctor because like, or you're a practicing physician assistant where you were <laughs> sitting there in the office and something just hit you and said, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going on. I'm doing my thing. Was there ever a moment or a a series of moments that got you to that point? Yeah, there was. There was. um, What were you feeling at that point? What were you feeling at that point that kind of got you to that that internal turmoil, so to speak? Well, I think I think it was brewing for a while. I think I mean, I don't think there was really one moment where, you know, I had the passion, you know, or had the desire to move on and do something else. I just think I just didn't think it was possible. So what I started to do was I started implementing these techniques and philosophies um, that I was learning actually at the practice, the conventional practice I was working at. So, you know, I was learning more functional. I was implementing these things into the conventional uh, world I was practicing in. And it was actually, you know, not too bad. It's like, hey, this is really good. I'm starting to help a lot of people get down to the root causes. Um, and it, it was good. It wasn't my overall dream, but it was good at that moment. But I think the moment that it really hit me is when uh, the clinician I was working for heard about what I was doing, you know, because he owned the clinic. I was just working for him, right? Yeah. He heard about what I was doing. And he, uh, he, he texted me, he said, hey, hey, Steve, I want to talk with you about some of the things you're doing with thyroid. I'm a huge thyroid guy. And 
I was like, great doc, you know, Hey, I'll be right there. Boom, boom, boom. And I was real excited. I'm going to sure, sure all these things that I'm doing, how I'm getting down to the root cause talking about TSH, T3, T4, reverse T3, TPL, all these different things that I didn't learn really in school, but now I, I knew that they existed and I was implementing to really help people. And then pretty much, you know, when I was really, when I went to his office, you know, thinking I was going to get that, you know, that a boy type, uh, you know, welcome. He pretty much yeah. said, I don't know what you're doing, but we don't do that here. And I'm like, wow. Wow. That was a really powerful moment. And that moment, that, that day, um, I was like, that's it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I know I just can't do it here. So it's like one of those things, like you won't know till you try. And you got to jump and then you figure out how to fly. Right. So it was one of those things that that night I drove home and I was just like in disbelief. But then about halfway home, I, I had this sense of just energy and excitement and, you know, optimism, because that's the way I always kind of live my life. You know, the, the adventure. Right. Um, and then long story short, I, uh, you know, wrote my wrote my, um, you know, my uh, you know, my, my, my letter saying that I was going to, you know, leave the practice that night, resignation letter, I was leave that night, turn in the next, next day, and the rest is history. So it, it, I think it was a lot of moments were building up to that point, but that was like, that was, that was it. That was, it. I was like, I don't, I got it. I got to make a change. Um, and like I said, it's been one of the most. And tell me, tell me know, right there, right, right there. When you're, mm -hmm. when you're saying that's it, I'm out, boom, I'm done. What happened right after that? Like what? Was it like roses and rainbows as soon as you just like put in the resignation letter and everything just boom? Yeah. I'm a seven I mean, figure thought, business. Yeah. I thought it was going to be, you know, gum, gumdrops and, uh, you know, unicorns, but it wasn't, man. Not at all. Um, Tell me was, through that. Talk me through that part. Right yeah. There, so pretty much, you know, I got, yeah. You know, I just, you know, put my suit on, got my letter. And I just said that, you know, I was like, hey, doc, you know, here's my, here's my letter. Um, I'm moving on. He was, he was actually really surprised and kind of blown away. Mm -hmm. And pretty much, I just, I just, had to be open and honest and saying, Hey, this is not who I am. This is not, this is not, um, you know, how I believe that I need to practice medicine. And a lot, a couple of things were kind of leading up to that point too. What I forgot to mention is like, you know, I was there for a while, several years and I was never written up. I never got in trouble. I was like, you know, I was like kind of the golden boy in many ways. Um, yeah. and then all of a sudden I was like written up like three times in one week. I'm like, come on, you know, what's going on here for things that were just kind of what are we talking about here? It's just ridiculous type things. Um, but I knew what he was doing. He was putting together a case to have leverage to fire me. And I yeah. said that. I was like, I even said, hey, I'm, I'm no geek off the street. I was like, I know what you're doing. He goes, what do you mean? I, go, I know what you're doing. I go, I, you know, I, I know, I know the system. I know what you're trying to put together. He goes, well, yeah, we weren't sure if we're going to let you go or not. I was like, yeah, you did. You, you know. I was like, don't lie to me. You know. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, so that at that moment, I mean, like I said, it was a really good conversation. It was, it was, you know, I, I, you know, it was respectful, but it was also straightforward. And I think it was very healthy for me in my career because, you know, like I told Tony Robbins quote, I was like, if you want to take the island, you got to burn the boats, right? And as that moment, really, if I wanted to take the island and, and go in a direction that I believed I needed to go, then there was no retreat. I, I, had, I couldn't say, okay, well, it's going to work. I'll come crawling back. No, no, I was all in. I was all in. And it was, it was, it was a little um, interesting because, you know, you know, my wife and I had a, I had a two-year-old son. I'm like, whoa, I need income, right? <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, that's just how the way the world works. But like what were I you said, feeling at that point? What were you feeling? I mean, you have a wife, you have responsibilities. I'm sure you yeah. had your house and stuff at the time. Yeah. The good thing is I had 100% support from my wife. I mean, she has, she is, she is my rock. She, she ha has, when, when she believes in me and she, she's all in, she goes, let's do it. And there's there no question about it. It's like, we'll figure it out. If we, you know, I don't know. If we, you know, struggle for several months, we'll just sell everything and do whatever. You know, we'll, we will make it. And uh, um, I think that was one of the biggest things because if I didn't have that, I, I, I know for a fact I would not be here 100%, not here today. Um, and so it was cool. And I think that whenever we have a big decision, a big choice, this comes with, you know, career, family, or, or whatever. I think if it comes down to you, if we, we remember our why, why we're doing something in the first place, then I think that is what keeps us, gives us the fuel to keep on going. 
And even when times get tough, even when times get hard, I mean, it's like I said, I, I left, you know, a, a salary and I was making, you know, about maybe 125 a year. So it's it a decent salary. And then I went boom to nothing. And then, you know, starting a new business, I was making like 200 bucks a week, you know? So it's one of those things I was like, Whoa, you know, Hey, um, so it was, it was, again, it was a growing opportunity, but I always believed in myself. I was be myself. And like I said, it's, but it's, it wasn't just me. It was the support, the camaraderie, the mentorship that I mentioned with Dr. Hotsey up in Houston and many other clinicians too. Um, but it was, um, it was definitely uh, interesting, uh, a little scary at times, but overall exciting though. It was very exciting. So, yeah. So what was the, I guess, what was the plan? Cause I, I look at it too, is right. It's like, you gotta, you, you left your thing that gave you the, the breadwinner and you're, back at zero what was your plan like what was your plan of action or did you not have one I kind of started you know so it was one of those things where I, I kind of you know was trying to set the foundation on learning about business I never really knew about business ever at all mm -hmm. so you know the plan was honestly just to one work as hard as I can long hours early mornings and ask questions um, and that's really the way I I started to build this and also implementing different, the, the core values and policies and procedures that we still carry today. We haven't changed at all as far as the way we treat each individual that walks through our door. I, you know, even, even better, learning more ways to make people feel welcome, inspired and happy when they, when they visit us. But yeah, you know, that was really the plan. That was, I mean, a lot of, a lot of book reading, a lot of calling people on the phone, a lot of, you know, kind of like, you did, one of the things that was, was told to me by one of my mentors, he goes, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to pave your own path. You know, it's like, hey, find things that people have done and gone before you and copy them, you know, or, or, or mimic them or, you know, ask them for guidance in certain ways. And that's what I that's what I did as far as helping to get these things going. So um, that's what I really did. And like I said, as time continues, we've been open for about maybe three and a half years. And so, you know, you learn something new every single day you know, and look every, every day, if you're not moving forward, it really, you are moving backwards because everybody else is moving forward and you're going to fall behind. So that's one of the things that, you know, all that, that hunger and that desire burning the boats and having that why of why I was doing it in the first place. And, and yeah, I, I had to go all in. So that was really my mindset. And then, like I said, meeting people like yourself and David and Raul, you know, our, our team and everything, it kind of helps take, take things to the next level. And that's what you're doing for me. But in the beginning, it was just, you know, just trying to get things going and, and, and learning from people who have gone before me. I don't think I asked you this yet, but what made you want to be a doctor or a physician yeah. assistant when you could have yeah. done literally anything else? I, I ask yeah. people, I ask people this question because you know how like you get into, um, they ask you probably when you were doing your, your, your um, a residency there or before mm. you did your residency, they said, why do you want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that it was, Gosh, many reasons why. One of the things that what was the big reason? What was the number one reason why you said I'm doing medical? That's what I want to do. With I really wanted to have a, a deeper relationship with 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 helping people overcome their struggles. I, I I've been blessed with, with an awesome life. Not even before, um, you know, I became physician assistant and you know and moved here and everything. But my parents, you know, my parents are awesome, awesome people, and they're like my best friends. And so I guess the, the joy and excitement and a lot of laughter growing up. It's like I saw a lot of people who didn't have that. So even before I practiced medicine, before I was a firefighter, before I went to the military or anything like that, that's one thing I've always tried to treat people with, you know, to try to help them, you know, laugh and, you know, feel joy. And because there's a lot of stress out there that can strip you from that. But I think that, you know, it really kind of started to, to the seed was kind of planted in me is when I was actually a firefighter and I didn't even know it because. I was an EMT. So, you know, I worked a lot on the ambulances, you know, car wrecks and heart attacks and strokes and injuries and domestic, you know, situations. So I would, I would do acute care. I would pretty much package them up, get them stable, boom, send them to the hospital. But I always wondered like, you know, what goes on after <laughs> I, I go from the ambulance, right? To the hospital. It's like, I wanted to learn more. I wanted more of that because I always had the desire to really kind of dive in deeper to see what else can I do to help you literally get back on your feet and back out there to live the best life possible. And so that was my, that was kind of when things started to, to really change for me. And then when I went into military, like I said, I was in a special operations program in the beginning. I didn't, I, first of all, I didn't make it through the program, obviously. So I, I did not, I got, I got injured. They kicked me out. So I had to, you know, change jobs. Um, but anyway, so they reclassed me into surgery. So I actually worked in surgery 
in the hospitals when I had to change jobs in the Air Force. And so that was my opportunity. That was my opportunity to really learn about, you know, a more in-depth, hands-on um, care. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And so it was, that was kind of helped water that seed. And then after I was out of the military, you know, that's, you know, I worked two more years as a firefighter, but then the injuries that, that I sustained in the military, I just couldn't do it anymore. I mean, my, my back was, I was like, I can't do this for the next 30 years. I got to find something else. So I kind of went back to those, to that desire and that, that mindset I had, like, you know what, what if I try to go back into medicine at a deeper level so I can have more of an involvement hands-on in leadership to help people, um, and that's what really kind of started. And then it kind of evolved, it kind of evolved when I learned more about, hey, it doesn't have to only be the, the conventional way. I had these other ways that I could practice as well. Not many people do it, but it's still there if I choose to take that opportunity. And then, like I said, the rest is history after that. And here we are today. Interesting. That's cool. That's a cool journey. I mean, I didn't yeah. even know you were a firefighter, man. I can't yeah, see you. Man. I mean, I guess I can, right? I could see you as a firefighter. Yeah. And it was fun too. I mean, like if I, you know, honestly, you know, if, if, if my injuries didn't, um, you know, cause me to, to seek and to think about a different career, I'd probably still be a firefighter. You know, I, 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 I loved it. You know, the guys I was working with and the camaraderie and the brothership that was there, it was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't do it anymore. Physically, I couldn't do it anymore. Um, mm. But no, I, I'm super happy the way things worked out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything at all. Um, but um, yeah, it was a great time in my life. Interesting. Okay, so so let's go back to the story. I had to ask that question because I don't think I asked it in the beginning. But let's go back yeah, to yeah. the story of of you left your you left your quote unquote nine to nine job because <laughs> yeah, I imagine yeah. if you were <laughs> a physician over there, you were probably working nine to nine every day. Yeah, and that was a called. lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time. So you left that cushy job, $125,000 a year. And you went from that to basically making $200 a week. How yeah. did the trajectory to where you are now uh, come about? Like, what was that? I guess, what were your results as a result of you getting, just going all in for yourself? Like, how did that look in terms of, you know, obviously we're going to be talking to entrepreneurs and stuff. People yeah. really want to change their life. Um, mm -hmm. How did that look, that, that, that time frame and also the, the results level of it? Because I think it's important to kind of see through that lens of someone that's been here and taken it up there and it's going to the next, next level with it. Um, so right. I think it's really important to see those, those, those stepping stones, so to speak. Yeah, that's a great question. So I think for me, one of the things that and we're learning more and more now is that a lot of times what we provide as a service as entrepreneurs and even, you know, what I do in medicine, it's not necessarily about the time. It's about the outcome. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people, so with people, you know, if you offer something that can really change someone's life, you know, it, it can, you know, and they have a meeting with you or a consultation with you or a visit with you or whatever. Yeah, it could be five minutes, but you might get a lifetime worth of change and knowledge to help you, you know, take your dreams to the next level. But so a lot of times, you know, it's not necessarily about the time. It's about, you know, the, the what you're providing and the outcome the individual will receive. And I think once I learned that, um, I really started to change the structure of how we ran my clinic, you know, and so that that is one of the things that we, we helped implement different things. And it, it really went back to the mindset of an act of service. And if you really believe in what you're doing, if you really believe in the product you have and how it can benefit people and you're not selling just a you know snake oil out there, then I think it, it will grow. It just depends on how you how you serve it. I mean, if you have, you know, if you get a, a Chick-fil-A sandwich and it comes in like in a little bag, you know, that's one thing, but if you take that same Chick-fil-A sandwich and you serve it on some gold plated China, you're going to have a different mindset mm -hmm. uh, of how that sandwich looks. So yeah. it's one of those things that, you know, what I'm doing, you know, as far as medicine, you know, uh, you know, several people are out there doing it, but it's how you do it different, how you do it better. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the mindsets that for all entrepreneurs, whether, whether it's real estate, whether it's selling cars, whether you're in medicine, whether if you're helping a coaching program like you guys are doing. So it's, that's one of the things. And, and that actually helped, you know, the quality of service that I was able to provide. And then after that, you know, it was just, you know, a lot of word of mouth, you know, social media, you know, these other marketing tools. But I had to, re had to also remind myself that, you know, I'll never know it all. We'll never know it all. Even if we do something for 40 years, we'll never know it all. 
So I always reminded myself, and a lot of times I had the fear, oh, I don't want to post this. I don't want to post that. I don't want to make this or make that on social media because, oh, I didn't hit every point or it wasn't perfect. You know, done is better than perfect. Just do it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that was one th big thing that I, I'm still working on myself. And the other thing is, is you'll, again, you'll never know it all, but it's not about what you know. It's about what you do with what you know. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people can have all the knowledge in the world. They just sit on their couch all day, not do anything about it. They're not changing or impacting the world at all. But if someone just has a you know, small percentage of what that person who knows it all knows and really just celebrates it and gives it to the world, well, that person is going to be the successful one. So I think that's kind of where, what, where my journey um, began and where it's taking me now is just, just go out there and do it. If you have a passion, if, you, if you're good at something and you have a, a desire to do that for a living, then start sharing it with the world in the ways that, you know, that you're comfortable with now, but also be comfortable with being uncomfortable and do things you maybe don't want to do, or, you know, kind of, oh, I don't have time for them, or that's not my gift, or I don't know, I'm not the best on camera, I, I stutter, or, you know, whatever, you know, we have excuses for everything, but we don't want to become our excuse. So really having that mindset of just going out there, doing it, you won't know until you try, and done is better than perfect, that's how you're going to make that, um, that progression, that progress that you're looking for. Interesting. Okay. And when, so uh, what are, what are, what are some of the results as you, you know, from leaving your job and mm -hmm. then getting to like where you're at today? Like talk me through that part right there, because if you're making $200 a, a week, um, <laughs> I hope you're not making $200 a week right now. No, <laughs> so, it's I mean, not. It's about how did that work? Like, 260 a week now. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. $50 more. That, yeah, 50, 50 goes to my son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, no, I think one of the main things and one of the one of my whys, one, the reason why I did this, um, and I think a lot of times people have this too, is for me, it, it was freedom. I wanted freedom. You know, I really wanted to not wake up 30 years from now and just have like a little retirement and not, and, you know, really not build something myself and not waste all that time. That's, that's, a, that's, that's not the word I'm looking for, but I guess helping someone else build their dream by me working for them, I wanted to put the same time and dedication into my dream and build it my way, you know, for mm -hmm. myself, my, for my family. And then in result, all the benefits that come along with that. And like I said, I work, I mean, I'll be honest with you, and a lot of entrepreneurs would agree. It's like, I'm working more. I'm putting longer hours in. I'm more in depth, more invested, more involved. But I don't feel like that, like, like I am because I'm building my own dream. You know, I'm building this in the way I believe, in the way I want, the way I, the way I desire to practice my career. And so, yeah, so after, after, you know, like I said, we started to really make it a name for ourselves and people started getting results and then the price increased, you know, like I said, you're, you're paying for the outcome. So yeah, no, we're making a little more than, than $200 a week right now. Yeah, um, yeah. But like I said, it didn't happen. But did it happen? Okay. I was about to ask, did it happen yeah. overnight? No, it didn't. So I think that, you know, for us to really start, you know, being, I guess, profitable i mean it was good you know maybe eight months or so i mean we were we were surviving we weren't thriving we were surviving mm -hmm. um we were paying the bills obviously and everything but you know it was one of those things where it's like hey we're again we're breaking even breaking even breaking even okay maybe maybe we had maybe we didn't break even that month we we're a little bit lower so what do we do got to do differently to make sure we don't have the same results two three months in a row and i think that like i said it was just learning them it, it's a lot of you know a lot of hard work but like i said the work you put into it it's a different type of work and it's a different type of feeling because you're building your own dream. And I think if you do that, then it doesn't really, I mean, really, I, I honestly, since I left the last practice I was at, I really haven't felt like I worked a day in my life. I don't, mm. you know, because I'm, I really feel happy, you know, what I'm doing now. Not every day is perfect. You know, not every day will be perfect, no matter what job you're in. But at least that day, I know or those days that might be a little challenging. I know whatever happens along this path is because of me and my choices. And I own up to it as a man, as a clinician, as someone who's responsible for other people's lives in a, at a, in a certain way to mm -hmm. say, hey, you know what? You don't have time to cry about it. You better buck up and figure it out and to really help this individual. Why? Because they're trusting you. And I take that responsibility very, very seriously. Um, and, and I say with that mindset, that act of service, that's what helped us, again, charge you know, a, a higher ticket value for each consultation with me and also allowed me to help, help hire like-minded people who have the same philosophy and same mindset to help carry on the mission the way I believed. And that's how we were able to grow. We went from just my wife, myself, two people, and now we have about, you know, 
you know, about six full time and then two part time. So we have about eight employees now that are working for us, again, helping this vision grow in the direction that I feel is necessary. So awesome. And then so did you start off with one patient or all the patients left from that other? Well, how did that work? Yeah. Did you just go yeah, and talk no, to great. people or what? How did yeah. that even work? I don't know the strategy. Like, like, what did you do? Did you just go knock on people's door? Hey, I'm a doctor. Come, <laughs> you know, I, I, I can fix your problem. Or what was that yeah. look like? Yeah, you know, great question. So like that, uh, some people did, they followed me. They followed me over to where I was at now. Um, some of them are actually still with me after, you know, three and a half years. Some of them not so much because a lot of times people are used to using their insurance and we are a cash-based clinic. So right. um, you are able to use your insurance for if we need to do a prescription medication outside the clinic, for imaging, for labs, go for it. We'll support that and help you out as much as possible. But again, I, as far as what I do, how the time I want to give each individual, you know, the hour-long visit, I don't want to be controlled by insurance on how I serve you as an individual. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's the main thing. But as far as getting the word out there, I mean, I was, you know, plugged into a lot of the, um, you know, the, the, the endurance community, the, the endurance athletics community, you know, the marathoners, the triathletes, things like that. And that's what, that's what I used to do. And so those individuals really, you know, supported me in many, many ways, getting these things going, getting the message out. And, and that's really where we started. So we went to a lot of conventions, you know, a lot of conferences, you know, we had booths, we went to the races, had a little table there, handing out flyers here and here are some samples, here are some supplements, you know, here are some power, you know, you know, sports bars, just getting, just letting people know who we are. And then I think once we had the opportunity to, to share about what type of medicine we're looking to bring to the Valley, how we're going to do it, how we're going to serve it, people are like, oh, that sounds really good. And a lot of times people thought that, you know what? that's what I want. That's what I thought I was receiving when they gave me that pill, but I guess not. That makes sense. And that's probably one of the things that the responses I've, I received the most, like, oh, well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And like I said, maybe the medicine I practice isn't for everybody. And I get it. And I respect that. And I'm not trying to like bash anybody who practices in conventional medicine. That's not what I'm doing at all. I'm saying this, this is my philosophy and what I believe. And I think mm -hmm. As clinicians, I hope that we all have that mindset, you know, practice the way you believe in what you think is ethically correct. And yeah. I just couldn't practice that way anymore because I didn't believe it was ethically and morally correct for me on the way I wanted to serve. And this is just me speaking 100% me. Yeah. So yeah, that's what kind of brought me to it. But yeah, it was just kind of getting out there, you know, again, posting as much as I could, talking, pamphlets, flyers, cards, doing what I could. Um, and then it just kind of grew. Because people really, really genuinely felt better, more energy, vitality, mental clarity, weight loss, better sleep, sexual vitality, all of these different things that people were looking for, but they weren't achieving because, well, probably for many reasons, but a lot of times it was because the time, attention, and the therapy routines weren't actually helping heal their body, they were helping cover up the symptoms. And then you got this vicious circle of you're never getting anywhere. Because now you have a world of dependency on those medications instead of independency with help in taking charge of your life. And that's what I want to encourage each individual that I serve to do is take charge of who you are and I will help get you there. Wow, that's awesome. That's amazing. I was actually going to ask you, what are some of the results that you've seen as a result, like oh, yeah. um, conventional to what you're doing now? Um, if you don't mind kind of expanding on that and then just yeah. ask one question after that, if you don't mind, and then we'll wrap yeah. it up. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So really, you really some of the victory. So I, you'll hear me where it's people who come visit me. Um, they're going to hear me victories. use the term called victories a lot, you know, because I believe that every victory should be celebrated, whether it's someone that, you know, is trying, I've seen people all around the spectrum. I've seen people who, you know, haven't worked out for the last 12 years. So I see somebody who's about to run the Boston Marathon. You know, I see people who has never lifted a weight in their life to the world champion power lifters. You know, so I see a lot of people that, and like I said, me needing, I need to customize these routines for each person. So you'll never receive a cookie cutter therapy. You'll never receive a one size fits all therapy with me. It's all going to be about you, your goals, your dreams, and the destination of how we can work together as a team to get you there. So some of the victories that we've seen was, you know, getting people who have take, had 13 medications, you know, their little baggy when they come saw, and see me for the first time. And now they're taking maybe one or two or sometimes none. You know, um, I have seen people who were diagnosed with dementia and now the, the diagnosis went away because really it was because of their, their low levels of thyroid and low testosterone that was actually just 
impacting their brain to the point where, yeah, they had dementia type symptoms, but even if you, they had dementia, the question is why? And we have countless, you know, success stories like that. A guy come in, hey, he, he, he saved his marriage. Why? Because he was able to have, you know, sexual relations with her now because he had erectile dysfunction and low libido for the last, you know, 15, 20 years. I had people who, you know, who was, who was not able to, um, you know, perform at work. You know, they were just kind of, you know, kind of there, more of a liability than an asset because they're overweight, they're sluggish, they're tired, they couldn't, they didn't want to get out of bed. They're always calling in, you know, sick to work. And now we optimize, they lost 40 pounds, they got their vitality back, we optimized who they were, got their vitamin D up, got their inflammation down, and then boom, I feel a lot better. Now I'm able to perform more and life is a lot more enjoyable. We have people who, you know, have, uh, have lost 40 pounds in 30 days and not in a strict diet way, not in a way that you're going to have to starve yourself. Or we have people who build, you know, lean out and find out those abs they wanted to, not by, you know, spending, you know, three, four hours in the gym, but just helping what the workouts you are doing, tailoring them and optimizing the fuel and tanks within your body so you get the better performance on the outside and the results that you're looking for. So these are things that we hear every single day and everything in between as far as like, hey, my mental fog is gone. My hot flashes, my night sweats have resolved. I'm able to get better sleep. You know, these are all things that people experience. And the question is why? Why are these things happening? And once we get down to that root cause and really customize these routines in a way to help you achieve something called cellular efficiency, that's where the magic's made. But we just need time, attention, and relationships to yeah. get you there. And once we do, that's where um, lives are changed. And so really people with diagnosis, oh, you have high blood pressure, anxiety, pain, dementia, insomnia, whatever. A diagnosis doesn't tell me what's wrong with you. It doesn't. It tells me what you're labeled as. Mm -hmm. My question is, why were you given that label in the first place? Let's work together to overcome that label, to get you to that destination. And that's where you really start enjoying life. Interesting. Interesting. Well, that's cool. You know what? Two things I took away from this interview that you do a lot. Um, hold on. There's, there's two words. And I, I talk about, I talk with people a lot about the words that they say and the way that they frame the words that they say. You said three things that I never heard anybody say, but you frame it in a different way. I said, what are some of the results? And you switched it and you said the victories. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. I thought that was really interesting because I never looked at it as that is like a victory as rich as in regards to like a result. Like, um, I thought that was interesting. I think I'm going to probably use that. I like the, the concept of like, celebrating victories um gotcha. and then gotcha. when you said <laughs> i thought this was different too you said i said what were you doing what were you you were talking about you know basically about going out there and and, and everybody someone can know it all but doesn't do anything and this person that that knows very little but you said the word celebrates yeah the thing yeah. and what you really mean by celebration or celebrating this thing is marketing. Yeah. That's what yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, but, but when you say that, it sounds so much different. Like I've yeah. heard you say it on multiple occasions. You said like, yeah, I want to celebrate their, I celebrate these results or I celebrate these victories. And really when it comes down to it, it's like you're marketing, but you're not saying marketing because there is some, some level of like the way you position these things and also clients, um, you don't call them clients, you call them or patients, you call them guests. So I really think, I love those phrases in terms of like how you position the way that you communicate with client, um, well, with clients, with guests, um, yeah, yeah. with guests. And I, I'm going to use them for me, but also like maybe <laughs> if you guys are watching the replay or watching this after, you can start to look at it in terms of marketing is a celebration in uh it's not so much of a of a, t a a task or a i have to do these things if you look at it and i think that's how you get through the ability to get your message out there is it's not a, a not a task it's a celebration and when you yeah. look at it like that it's like oh my gosh i can celebrate everything yeah, yeah. celebrate everything and everyone and that's what makes life enjoyable too. And that's what I encourage all of our guests to do. I mean, think about it. We celebrate all the time. Hey, if you get a job promotion, we say, oh man, let's go celebrate. Or hey, it's my little boy's birthday. We got to celebrate his birthday. Or if we have a wedding, we got to celebrate the wedding. <laughs> you know, so we're celebrating all the time. So let's start celebrating the victories that we're achieving. Maybe you're, you're, eat, you're drinking less Coke. Oh, you, maybe you drink. I had somebody the other day said, said that he drinks 80 beers in one week. 
He looked me straight in the eye. He said, I drink 80 beers in one week. He, and he came back two weeks later and said, hey, you know what? I cut that, the, that 80 down to 24. I said, 24 beers a week? And I go, boom, bam, give him a big old hug. And like, dude, we're on the right path. Let's get there. Because mm -hmm. That's a victory. Or if I have somebody that's like, hey, oh man, I really want to run a marathon someday. That's always been my dream. Great. We'll start by putting your shoes by the front door so you look at them every time you walk outside. That's a victory because it wasn't done before, but it's helping you achieve, get closer to that overall destination. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of victories out there. And a lot of times we focus on the negative things, things we can't do. But what about things we are doing and can do? Mm -hmm. And once we do that, that just starts building the person up. And, um, especially, you know, when, when they've been down for so long. So that's, again, yeah, celebrate the victories. I think once we do, if we find, you know, five victories a day that we can at least celebrate, that just starts changing things. And, and that helps you get on the path to health and wellness. Wow, that's amazing. And I wanted to bring you on because I know that you have something kind of brewing in the works here. And yeah. I, I just wanted to see how your mind worked about getting to this point here. Um, you mentioned in the beginning of this interview, it's called Lion's Lead. Yeah, Lion's uh, Lead. Talk me through a little bit about what that is and why you came up with this like, this concept. Yeah, no, thanks. So Lion's Lead is going to be a new concept that I'm, that I'm rolling out for men. You know, men who are high-performing high individuals who are looking to increase their energy, their strength, and their sexual vitality. You know, a lot of times the messages that I've been hearing for last, like, you know, you know, 15 years working in medicine is that those are the things that guys are really struggling with. Man, I just, I'm losing weight, you know, I'm losing my muscle mass, I have mental fog, I'm moody, sometimes I'm having hot flashes at night, I'm just not feeling like a guy anymore, I can't play with my kids, you know, I have reptile dysfunction, all these different things. And I, I believe, you know, that we, as men and women, we both have our role in society, you know, and so I want to help guys feel like men again, feel like the lion, you know, that needs to be a leader in their family, in their community, in their, their career, in their country, in our country. And so that's one of the things that I really wanted to create a program where I can dive all in and really help men optimize who they are, not yeah. to be normal, not to just survive, but to really optimize and to help, you know, restore their things like their testosterone and their mental clarity, their energy to lose weight, lean muscle mass, um, you know, those types of things, it can be done. Um, I do it every day. It's one of those things that I want to create a, an all inclusive program where we talk about hormonal balance consultations with me, labs, peptides, and we even talk about peptides, peptides are the next level of anti aging medicine. So all these different things that I want to be just a turnkey for men to really help men take it to that next level and keep you there in a way that you can just get back the vitality and enthusiasm that you're looking for. Wow. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So if, if someone was to, you know, figure, want to talk a little bit more about lion's lead or, or figure out what you got going on there, because I'll be honest with you, I did one of the things that you were talking about the peptide things. And, um, at first it didn't, I didn't feel it. And I've been in the, in, I was a, a just quick little back, back background. Um, I was actually a personal trainer for many years. And then after that, I went into like the business world. I gained a bunch yep. of weight. I stopped doing the personal training. It's easy to lose. It's easy to be in shape when that's your job. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so I, uh, you know, I, I, I changed my career path or so to speak. And um, I just, I felt exactly what you said. I was just like sluggish. I couldn't think straight. I couldn't stay focused. I couldn't do all these things. And um, you know, I kind of went with you and this is why I bring you on is because I went with you and I wouldn't have brought you on if I didn't get the results. Right. Um, yeah. so I went with you and I started to feel like, um, I, I, at first I didn't feel it. Right. But it's, it's, it's yeah. kind of like a slow burn with it. And I, you know, as most people probably have worked with you that the first two weeks, they're like, why isn't things changing? It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, they, they want the caffeine, the magic pill. It, it, everyone's different too. And so it, I, that's why I always say, Hey, it's a journey. It's a journey, you know, a marathon. And so, but the thing about it is we just keep on moving forward and things will click, but that also comes in with the customization and everyone is different. So that's why we got to keep on customizing things, you know, for you, for me, whoever I work with to make sure the overall destination is achieved, but how we get there is, is different for each person usually. Yeah, exactly. And just like as a personal thing, I mean, my mind has been so clear in, in terms of like things that awesome. I want to do. I wake up better. I feel like as soon as I, I used to wake up and I would just be like, Ugh. 
I wake yeah. up and I pop up. I mean, I haven't lost a bunch of weight yet. And, and that's obviously yeah. my diet, but I go to the gym <laughs> and I feel so like solid, man. I, I can't yeah. even tell you like the amount of strength and like, um, like, it's just, it's so, um, it's like, uh, it's, it's transcendent in yeah. terms of the, the way that I feel at the gym. And I, and it, uh, you know, kind of real quick, I had actually torn my pec minor. So I couldn't do oh. like exercises right before I met you. I had tore my pec minor, um, not, not even like three months before I met you. And oh, wow. I couldn't do, I couldn't do a push up. I couldn't do a pull up. I couldn't do any of that stuff because it was connected. It's all connected. Right. So, yep. um, you know, after kind of working with you and like do, slowly building up to it, man, I just start, I started working out again on the, on my chest and my upper body. And I just feel so like strong. I'm not even kidding yeah. with you. I feel like probably the strongest I've ever felt. I'm at the heaviest I've ever been, but that's, you know, obviously it comes down to me, but I just ran a, I'll give you guys this right here before, um, I just ran a half marathon. And I was running, yeah, I just ran a half marathon not too long ago. I was running each mile. And some of you guys that are runners or have ever thought about this, like Steve was talking about a marathon or a triathlete or whatever, I'm 240 pounds, all right, or 230, <laughs> right? I was running each mile at eight minutes and 20 seconds a piece. Right. Then nonstop. Great. I was like a truck, man. And I wasn't even tired at the end of it. It was That's insane. Awesome. I, I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't even fathom the way I was like, man, this is amazing. So um, one, I want to shout you out. And also um, if they want to know a little bit more about Lions Lead or works, um, how would someone kind of get on your radar for that? How would, yeah, how would someone the, get on your radar? Yeah, yeah. The easiest way right now um, is probably just to just DM me, you know, find me on, on Facebook or, or Instagram and just kind of send me a message and then I'll, I'll reach out to you. We'll kind of talk about more of the program and protocols and things that we have going on. Um, we're still trying to, like I said, the, the, it's still in the infant stages of a full, full launch, but, um, they're, they're able to, you know, you know, start the program now, which I've been doing for a lot of guys. It's just that, you know, I don't have everything quite set up yet as far as, um, contact information, but as far as Facebook and Instagram, I say, go for it. And we'll, we'll definitely take care of you. Oh, Dan, I think I lost you. All right, Steve. So let's wrap this up. Um, where can someone find a little bit more about Lions Lead, the program, or information about how to get involved with this particular program? Awesome. Yeah. So really, the best thing to do at this time would be just to just DM me, send me a private message uh, on Facebook or Instagram at this time, and then uh, we're still working on the fine details of our again our official launch and our website and our landing page and all that. So. If someone has, wants interest, is interested and wants some more information, um, that would be the best thing right now. And I'd be more than happy to communicate with them, give them all the details and all the benefits, all the things that they're going to achieve and accomplish through the program, um, you know, through, through Instagram or Facebook, probably the best thing at this point. Awesome. Do you want to shout out um, maybe what your Instagram handle is? Yeah. So my Instagram handle, handle is Martinez, P-A-C-509. And then for... Yeah, um, uh, Facebook is just just my name, Steve Mar C. Martinez. So awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, Steve. Thank you so much. Even though the technical issues, man, I appreciate your time. And yeah, uh, let's get out there and get it done. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, thanks for up three, man. Um, and yeah, we'll do this again soon. So, all right. Bye, bye.